Hi folks and welcome back to LPJ Models. In this video I'm going to be building the ICM FCM 36 French light tank in 135th scale. I first heard of this interesting light tank in the game War Thunder and as soon as I realised ICM were releasing one I had to build it. Anyway let's take a look inside the box. The instruction manual is printed over 16 pages and is really easy to follow. It also includes a sprue map, which is very useful, and two full colour painting scheme guides. The decal sheet looks nicely printed and in register. The colours are vibrant and the carrier film looks thin. Sprue A contains the upper hull of the tank and also the turret. There's some nice weld seam details and some nice subdued rivets. On Sprue B, you'll find the parts that make up the lower hull tub, while Sprue C contains the running gear, the tools and other fine items. You get two of these. You get two runners of Sprue E that makes up the tow chain. The final piece in the box are the tracks. Now these come in a rubber band style, and I understand why ICM have gone for this, as the tracks are very fine and will be very hard to replicate in styrene. That being said, rubber band tracks can be a pain, so we'll see how we get on. Anyway, let's get on with the build. The parts were removed from the sprues with my god hand sprue cutters and any excess plastic or seam lines were removed with a sanding stick. The construction started with the lower hull tub, and whilst this was a multi-part assembly, it went together really nicely. It was glued in place with VMS styrene cement fast setting. The drive wheel came in three parts, and the sprocket teeth had some annoying seam lines, but as this wouldn't be very visible, I decided to leave it as is. The bogey wheels came in two parts, and the alignment was slightly tricky as they had no locator pins. The bogey wheels were then grouped in twos in their housings. If you're careful with your gluing, you can keep these movable. Although I had cleaned up the sprue gates, I drove the wheels over a sanding stick just to make sure they were smooth. The upper hull was pressed into place and left unglued. 
This was to make painting the running gear easier later on. Some of the hinges on the model were moulded separately, and whilst this is a nice detail, it was slightly fiddly. You're given the option to pose the driver's hatch open, but as there isn't any interior detail, I did mine closed. The exhaust pipes had a slight opening moulded into them, but I didn't think it was wide enough, so I opened this up further with a sharp scalpel blade. To make sure the exhaust pipes lined up properly, I assembled these on the model whilst leaving the whole sub-assembly unglued. When the glue had dried, this was removed and I stippled on some Mr. Surfacer 1000 with an old tatty brush to add some nice texture. The gun breech assembly came in two halves, but fit really nicely, so it only needed minimal cleanup. Gluing the pivot points for the gun assembly was quite tricky as the locator pins were really small, but with some fiddling and patience it was okay in the end. <laughs> 
The end of the gun barrel is supplied as a plug. I was dubious as to how this would work, but it fit okay. The hatch on the turret can also be posed in the open position, but as there is very minimal detail on the interior of the turret, I decided to close it up. The last thing to assemble before painting was the chain. The assembly of the chain was quite clever. One part had a gap in which you pressed two other links into the chain. These were linked together to create the full length. A small touch of glue and a squeeze of the tweezers were enough to fix it into place. OK, on to my favourite part of any build, the painting. I've been looking for a black primer for a while, and as the whole supply of Mr Surfacer Black in the UK seems to be non-existent, I decided to try some MRP Fine Surface Primer. This primer sprays really nicely out of the bottle, but you do need several layers to build up opacity. And while primers like Styron Res or Mr Surfacer will hide minor surface imperfections, this is so fine it won't, so you need to make sure your surface prep is on point. For the base colour, I wasn't happy with any of the sand colours I had in my paint rack, so I mixed my own. I mixed up some AK Real Colour Dunkel Gelb with MRP Clear Doped Linen 1, which is a slightly grey tan. This was mixed about 70% Dunkel Gelb to 30% CDL, and thinned with Mr. Leveling Thinners. This was then black based over the whole model. This mixture was sprayed at around 10 psi with my 0.2 Harder and Steenbeck. Before I moved on with the camouflage of the build, I had to finish up the inside of the running gear. Usually when you paint a tank, you've got access to the running gear, making painting a lot easier. But as this was all enclosed, I had to do some of the detail painting first. I firstly painted the camouflage sections in the mud chutes with K-colour light green. I first painted the outlines, and then the inner sections. This was built up with several layers of paint. If you use thin layers of paint when brush painting, you're less likely to get brush strokes in the finish. It can be a tedious process, but the results are worth it. The outer sections of the bogey wheels were painted with Citadel Stormhost Silver. This paint covers quite well, but it still needed two layers to build up to opacity. The sprocket teeth on the drive wheel were painted in the same colour. The tracks were then given a base coat of AK Real Colour 7K Sand mixed with a drop of Panzergrau. 
This was followed by painting the contact area of the tracks with Citadel Stormhost Silver. Attaching the tracks to the running gear was quite fiddly and I was quite careful as I was worried about breaking them. Next up was the nerve-wracking task of gluing the upper section of the hull to the lower. The mating surfaces to be glued were scraped free from paint. I then very carefully brushed in some fast setting styrene cement. The upper and lower halves were then pressed together to make sure the bond was strong. The join seams were then carefully sanded and spot primed with MRP Black Primer. The join area was then repainted with my base colour of Dunkel Gelb mixed with MRP Clear Dope Linen 1. Before I started brushing on the rest of the camouflage, I had to address a white patch on the top of the turret. This was painted freehand with MRP white, slightly toned down with CDL1. This was mixed at around three parts white to one part clear dope linen, and this really helped to tone the white down. The coverage with these light MRP colours is really good. I only needed a few passes to bring the paint up to full opacity. Using the instructions as a rough guide, I started to paint the main camouflage with my K-colour light green. This was quite nerve-wracking, as I'm not very confident with my brush painting, especially on such large areas. The K-colour light green, being an airbrush-ready paint, is already quite thin, but I did decide to thin it further. I thinned it at around 8 parts paint to 2 parts water. When painting the camouflage, I started with the outlines to make sure the shapes were right. These were then carefully filled in. This whole process took around three layers of paint, making sure to let each layer dry before applying the next. Painting camo like this can be slightly tedious, but it's worth it in the end if you take your time to make sure your paint is smooth. The green camo pattern was carried over the whole tank and it took me about two and a half days to finish with many breaks. The main paintwork of the tank was sealed in with a layer of VMS Satin Varnish HD. This was also to prepare the surface for decals. I don't mind decaling straight onto lacquer paints, but over a brush painted surface I wasn't so sure. The areas to be decaled were treated with a layer of VMS Decal Set and Fix. This works as an adhesive to get the decals to stick a bit better. The decals were then soaked in warm water and slid into place. I thought the decals over the vision ports would be problematic, 
but after pressing them down with a cotton bud and some decal softener, they were fine. To hide the carrier film on the decals, I sprayed over a layer of VMS matte varnish. This was built up in several layers around the decals and then sprayed over the entire tank. As the camouflage looked quite stark, I wanted to tone it down. I mixed up an ultra thin mix of AK Real Color Dunkel Delb and MRP Sand Slash Tan. This was thinned heavily with Mr. Leveling Thinners. This was sprayed at around 8 psi over the entire tank to blend everything in. I was very careful not to spray too much in one area because it would just run and pool. Whilst my filter layer was drying, I decided to start work on the tools. The metal areas of the tools were base coated in Vallejo Black. Whilst the black was still wet, I stippled in some tiny amounts of Vallejo Field Blue to add some variation. Citadel Stormhost Silver was then painted in areas that I wanted worn to bare metal. Some Vallejo Black mixed with Hull Red was then mapped over the entire tools to add some more variation. The metal areas of the tools were then finished with a very light wash of Vallejo Bright Orange. This gives the hint of a slightly rusty patina that finishes off these tools nicely. For the wooden areas of the tools, I started with a layer of Vallejo German Camouflage Beige World War II. When this had dried, I painted a fairly thick mix of Burnt Umber and Burnt Sienna Artist Oils. After about 15 minutes, I used a tatty old brush and used this to create a wood grain texture. This was done by dragging the brush in the direction I wanted the grain to go. The brush was cleaned fairly regularly. The goal is to remove enough oil paint to leave the impression of a wood grain. I removed any stray oil paint with VMS Universal Weathering Carrier and a fine brush. With the tools done, it was time to move on to chipping. I stippled on some Vallejo German Camouflage Beige mixed with stencil with a coarse sponge. The sponge was dipped in paint and then dabbed on a paper towel to remove any excess paint and then stippled onto the surface. The sponge chips were then infilled with VMS Chippenick CN01 rusty brown colour. These were painted in very carefully with a 3-0 Artis Opus Kalinsky Sable brush. 
The chipping was sealed in with a protective layer of VMS matte varnish. Next up was to add some light dust effects. The entire model was coated in two thin layers of MIG chipping fluid. MRP sand was then carefully sprayed at 8 psi in areas I wanted dust to accumulate. This buildup of dust was kept very subtle. Some of the dust was then removed by reactivating the chipping fluid with warm water. This was brushed in a downward motion and left some really nice organic shapes. Next up I painted the exhausts. These were base coated in a mix of MRP burnt iron mixed with red brown. I painted the sooty area of the exhausts with Alclad exhaust manifold. This was then given a heavy coat of MIG chipping fluid. When the chipping fluid was dry, I painted over it lightly with a mix of the base coat. Using an interdental brush, an old brush and water, I chipped away at the paint. I was careful not to remove too much. When I was happy with it, the exhaust assembly was glued into place. Next up, I applied a wash to the entire tank. I used Abtiling 502 Sepia mixed with VMS Universal Weathering Carrier. I started with the engine vents and then moved on to the rivets, panel lines and other small details. I also added some artificial shading around the top engine hatch. I used the AK Light Rust Wash to add some rust effects to the exhaust pipes. This was brushed into place and then blended in with VMS Universal Weathering Carrier. I also added some gentle streaking rust effects with AK streaking rust to the sides of the exhaust pipes. 
I also added some rust streaks to the side of the tank to add some more visual interest. The tools were fixed in place with VMS slow setting CA. To show some more wear on the tracks, I dry brushed the outside edges with Cetadel Iron Breaker. This was then followed by a light wash of AK Dust and Dirt Deposits Light Dust. To add some more realism and interest to the lower areas of the tank, I also speckled on some AK Light Dust. To add some more variety, this was followed up by some speckling of MIG Splashes effects turned earth. This was done very sparingly as I didn't want the effect to be too stark. To protect my weathering, the entire model was given one final coat of VMS matte varnish. The chain was painted with a mix of MRP Burnt Iron and MRP Black. I then speckled on some AK Light Rust Wash and AK Streaking Rust. When this was dry, it was time to fix the chain to the model. This was quite tricky, but the effect was really nice. The instructions showed two links of chain pressed into one gap. The gap just wasn't wide enough, so I just hung it on the hook. And with that, my ICM FCM 36 in 135th scale was complete. Before we get to the gallery images, I want to give a huge thanks to my patrons. You guys are awesome, and your support really helps keep the channel running. If you're interested in becoming a patron, click the card in the corner, or head over to patreon.com forward slash LPJ models. So, how do you think I did with this FCM 36? Let me know in the comments below. Also, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm James from LPJ Models. Thanks for watching.